Okay, so today's video will be for version number 11 of my speaker. Been some major changes, but keeping with tradition, this intro will be short. We'll jump into the build, we'll come back here, and we will talk about the changes made to the speaker. So I'll see you guys back here. Sponsor for today is PCB Way. PCB Way is the go-to destination for businesses, startups, and entrepreneurs seeking custom prototype services. From CNC and 3D printing to flexible and rigid PCB manufacturing, PCB Way offers a comprehensive range of services to meet all your prototyping needs. As a first-time user, take advantage of an exclusive offer of $5 off your initial order 
with dimensions on the circuit board of up to 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters and a quantity of up to 10. This is for single and dual layer PCBs. By using this offer, you pay zero dollars for the actual uh, circuit boards and you only pay the shipping and handling charges on your first purchase. Having personally used PCBWay for my own projects, I can confidently vouch for their exceptional quality and outstanding customer service. Visit PCBWay.com today and start bringing your ideas to life. Okay, so as you've seen from the build, some of the major changes include the addition of actual steel plates inside the motor magnet assembly of the speaker. Moving forward, all speakers will incorporate this same sort of design. The next two to three speakers will definitely incorporate this exact design. So moving to that, it helps me focus the magnetic field closer and kind of more precise into where I need it to be on the voice coil. It also allows me to move the magnetic field closer to the voice coil as I don't need a piece of plastic separating the magnet from the voice coil now to keep it from moving. I can secure the magnet in place and then the metal plate will then move that magnetic field out close to the voice coil for me. So this not only increases efficiency because it controls the magnetic field better, but it allows me to close up some of the magnetic field gap to the voice coil. So overall, the speaker gained about 12 decibels of sensitivity, which is, it's a big jump in sensitivity for a speaker. It's still not the greatest of sensitivities. It's coming in around the 77 to 78 decibel for one watt at one meter sensitivity range. So there are still better speakers that you can buy out there, but for an entire system that you can build for essentially the most expensive parts of the plates, if you can source some cheap local, you could build this whole setup here for approximately 40-ish dollars. So it's not the worst setup. So for $80, you can have a decent set of um, bookshelf speakers or like stereo speakers. Um, beyond that, it is the lightest build speaker so far that I've done. Um, I'll put the actual weight of all the moving stuff up here. But yeah, beyond that, that's about the major changes that I made for this speaker. So we'll jump into the graphs, the diagrams, um, all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, um, I'll meet you back here and we'll finish up. Okay, so first up here is the DAT system, the Dayton Audio Testing System, I guess. Um, the piston diameter or the cone diameter is 3.7 inches. I can put the metric conversion up on the screen. Um, I use the added mass method for my VAS and I used 50 grams of added mass. And you can see the SPL one watt at one meter right there is 76.82. Um, coming down here, these are just the TS parameters that this pulls. This is the parameters that I use to build the box. And then right here is, I'm not really sure how to read this graph. Um, Paul from Polymate3D has kind of been helping me understand what I'm looking for here, but I'm still not entirely sure how to read this graph. So for anybody out there that understands this graph, it's here for you to look at and see, but I really don't understand what I'm looking at yet. So Moving on to REW now, using the UMIC-1, I did two separate measurements here. The red measurement is with a speaker output of 0.45 volts, and the green line is with an output of 2.35 volts. These are just kind of the standardized voltage outputs on the amplifier that I've used throughout the entire testing of speakers. So, and this is with using the pink noise generator within REW to test the speakers with. So this is just kind of put my speakers all on the same playing field. I do have different speakers that I've tested because some of them weren't as efficient, so I had to go to the 2.35 volts. But as my speakers have became more efficient, I've moved to the 0.45 volt, as it seems to be plenty loud enough. As we can see here, it's, it's right around the 90 decibel 
range at just 0.45 volts but this speaker is producing well over 100 decibels the microphone was probably within 12 to 14 inches of the speaker when this was tested so it definitely is an improvement over version 10's um, speaker and all of the other speakers previous to that as well most important is that it's that way because of the magnets arranged on the metal plate system so but here's this graph for anybody that is interested in it Okay, um, so we've kind of seen how this speaker performed. Based upon the graphs, you can see that it is actually the best performing speaker by quite a significant amount compared to all the previous speakers. So I'm definitely moving in the right direction for speakers. The next couple models, I'm gonna start working on modularity so that the speaker can come apart and I can change parts in and out as need be. So the frame is gonna get rebuilt for this exact model. I'm gonna work on a couple different types of spiders. I like the flat spring design that I'm using, but I'm gonna try going back to a traditional spider using this foam TPU that I've been using as surround and kind of see where that moves things for the TS parameters. I'm also going to play around with maybe lengthening and shortening the cone and seeing what that does, as well as changing the curvature on the cone, making it straight, making it more curved. Um, partly for ease of printing is I'm having to print these on resin printers and it is messy and it's just, I would like it to be more accessible to people on just FDM printers. It's kind of a pain if you have to have both a resin and an FDM to recreate these. So. That's kind of the goals moving forward. So if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Um, like, subscribe. It helps the channel grow. And so yeah. Have a good one, guys.